Uh, no. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. What's going on, y'all? Episode three of Everything's Blurred. That's yeah. right. What's going on? This is yours truly, Brion. Everything's Blurred to yours every day. Every day, I'm, uh, every, yeah. You know what? <laughs> At least every you day, tried. Every, every day, I do, every day, every day, all day, some of the days. I... <laughs> At least you tried. Oh. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah. I promise English is my first language. It's just Tommy, y'all. Just stuttering ass Tommy. <laughs> hey, I feel your pain. It's okay. No, you don't, man. You don't feel my pain, man. Oh, okay. I trust me. I know for years. I know. <laughs> Same. <laughs> What's good, everybody? Um, I'm the one that gave Google Maps the directions to how to get to Sesame Street. Huh. I am the MR dot S H A U N, Mr. Shaw. <laughs> ah. Well, and I am and stuttering, 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 stuttering. <laughs> and uh, from the music that you y'all, y'all heard a little bit in the background, we was playing "Everyday Hustling" by the winner of last night's versus. But no, no, let me do the BS. The culture one. Mm. Rick, <laughs> Rick Ross versus Two Chains battle. What would you say, Tommy? Okay, buddy. Nope. Rose with the victory. Oh. Burst. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, man. What yeah, what y'all man. think in general overall about the we uh, I guess we all agree Ross won. Yes. What y'all think about just the whole situation as far as like the the, the energy, the presentation of it compared to Others. other versus battles that they had in this venue with everything, you know, all being equal. Well, I didn't see it, so sorry. I didn't. Yeah, that's not Brion's forte. If it ain't okay player-ish or native tongue-ish, ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's facts. Don't give me the little fan. It's facts, nigga. <laughs> Hey. You niggas, I know you all your damn life. Hey. <laughs> all right, so. Uh, uh, but, but, but to answer your question, I'm going to cut yeah. you off, Tommy. But I'm, I'm going to answer that question. Um, it was different in the sense of everybody, you know, when you watch the other joints, with the exception of, like, the Alicia Keys, John Legend, everybody else, you know, had their little vices with them. Maybe something to eat, something to drink. They were smoking on something, whatever. Two chains brought out some scrippers. <laughs> or one song. And then another song, Rick Ross 
my manager was like, they bring the masseuse out and got a whole massage going. You know, giving they had to do something, man, because like the that. energy. I mean, for I mean, real. it was different. Like, I'm not knocking it. Like, it was, it, it was, you know, it was. He changed every music. song. Was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so this next joint is, is special to me because you know we talk about the journey. This is when I got my first plaque. Boom. You know what I mean? And then the then DJs song. DJs were more hyped than them. Like the the pregame was more hype than the actual <laughs> verses. Yeah. <laughs> Real talk. Yeah. It was just too cool to be there. But I mean, you know, it was what it was. I mean, it's so crazy how. How music kind of like influence influences you because they have so many songs about getting money and being applied and so far you don't shoot. There was a point in time where I was watching the battle. I pulled my little stash out and was counting some money. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> I want to feel like I'm a part of this, you know? But um sure. it was uh I know some people were saying, I saw on Facebook, certain people thought that it was like the weakest one. Um, I wouldn't say that, but I would say just as far as overall energy and entertainment factor, you know what I mean? Like, like the other ones was really like kind of a party upbeat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even, even if it, you know, they might bring it down for a minute between songs and then get back to it. This was more like, even when the songs was on. I'll be back, sorry. And these are songs that's, uh, damn. All right, he we lost. Something we Go ahead. Anyway, even the songs that that kind of get you hype, though you know some of the joints that they that they known for, they're bangers. They was just you know they was just chilling. Yeah, I mean, there, there was so one thank song God where that they did them, the suits and the and the and the, and the strippers to, <laughs> to bring do something where, different. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I, yeah. like I just had it on in the background. Like, okay, I like this. You know, cool. Yeah, and then. You know, just going about doing what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel you. Yeah, no, there was one round where they both was vibing to um, somebody's song. It might have been maybe two chain song. It changed was hype when he was like rapping towards it or whatever. But it was one round where it was kind of lazy because he played the the verse to a song and it was just the acapella, I think. And then it went to the part where it was the hook for the ASAP Rocky joint. And that counted as a as as one of his rounds. And I was like, well, that's kind of weak. Because wasn't yeah. nobody real, real familiar with it. Um the the, the was, uh fucking problem? Yeah. People oh, you mean the actual verse. Yeah, he played the actual he, verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, and then kind of later true. on, they brought in the, and the they beat, the, and then they did the, and then they flipped it like that. And I was like, "Yeah." If it wasn't for that, to me. <laughs> anyway, that was, was kind of lazy to me, for real, for real. Well, uh, mm. um, I, I mean, they it was it was just like a real straightforward format, too, man. It wasn't even really like mm. a battle. It was like. Ross could play his his twenty, two chains play his twenty, regardless of what the other person was doing. They was like, I got this list, and I'm just going to talk to the audience, oh, yeah. and I'm gonna play what I'm gonna play. It wasn't no, I don't know. Like even even you know, and and most of them are, um, you know, most of them are like supportive. You know what I mean? The, they're they're fans of each other. They're like, oh yeah, yeah. I remember. I love this all joint. Was, yeah. When this, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, mean, but it was, but like it was still a DMX joint. It was like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it was still like a. All right, but you know, I gotta come back with this. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel you. It, with with them, it was just like, oh, that's changed over there. He gonna play his shit. I'm over here. I'm gonna play my shit. We just gonna have a good time tonight because we just two fly, fabulous, wealthy motherfuckers. Living a good life, drip. Huh. <laughs> Tony, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Damn. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know, I was watching an interview this morning that Rick Ross did with Hot 97, and what he said was, 
he didn't pull out a lot of his Jordan Smalls because, like, um, he said he was saving some of his bigger bangers, his bigger hits, just in case somebody wanted to do another battle. Because, mind you, he did none of the Maybachs. None of the Maybachs. So he's shows. saying, I, 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 I'm going to do one battle, and I still got enough bangers to go against whoever else in the novel. That's what he said. I like it. I like it. See? Some real hard body shit, Ross. So 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 with that being said, who you think would be a another a better opponent for him? For Ross. Trick Daddy. He got twenty in the clip? I don't know. I'm just thinking the Miami thing. <laughs> Ross versus Slip and Slide. Not even Trick Daddy. Ross versus Slip well, and Slide. Well, you know, Ross was on Slip and Slide and he wrote for Trina, so. Jeezy. Mm, did Jeezy do one yet? No. 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 I like Ross and Jeezy. I like Ross and Jeezy better than Ross and 2 Chains, to be honest. And I don't know if Jeezy will want to do it now that Ross has already done one. But I don't see why not. Like I, I still said. take Ross. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> you already know I'll how I Ross. feel about Jeezy. Jeezy is overrated to me. Mm. He got, he got, he has be, hits. Be, yes, yes, definitely got. But hits. mainly, but but I think it's mainly because he has great production. Yeah, and yeah. he has very catchy and infectious hooks. Yeah. As far as like bars, every now and then, because I like a like a, a handful of his songs, maybe three. And it seems like he might give me a verse where it's dope. I really get into it. And then other stuff is just it goes on one end after other. Like it's boring to me. I can't get with a G. I try to listen to GZ albums. I didn't get past a whole album. It just wasn't for me. Oh, man. What? B, what you think, man? I will say Rick Ross if it was Ross and Jeezy. I was thinking about Ross and... Um... T.I.? Huh? T.I.? Yeah. That'd be great. What's that, what's, that, what's that mean? What's that mean? Hey, yo, what's that mean to be out? Like, oh, 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 damn. <laughs> like, what is this? Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm talking. You know what I mean? I'm talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better put the SpongeBob on him and out. Yeah, for real. Yeah, you do that. Yeah, Sean, you do that. I do it. Uh, we talk about Jeezy. Uh, hey. Okay, we could just talk about him. not play the nigga music. Oh, yeah, man. but no, I, I agree, um, Sean, uh, T.I. and Ross. That sounded interesting, really. Yes, right. Who's well, T.I.? Well, T.I. T.I. and Jeezy, too, so either or, I go with if it was Ross and T. Well, T.I. won the 50. Yeah, that's crazy. But I don't think 50 going to do it. Mm. I wouldn't see why, though. I, I agree. I don't think you're going to do it either, but... Um, Pimp Squad Click versus... What? G wow. <laughs> Yo, said PSC. I know, that right? right? Damn. Heard that... Yo, a lot of these little clicks don't be lasting long, yo. Nope. Because Ross had one triple C cartel. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Jeezy had Boys in the Hood. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of those dudes, you know. Well, Boys in the Hood was a group, though. Yeah, it was a group, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, true. And he was, But yeah. a lot of those guys, but. Uh, but, but they was all solo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be able to besides Jeezy, that's all you heard of. I think Jody Breeze tried to come up with a project like, Last year or something, I saw it on that piff. I was like, 
Oh, okay. He's still making music. All right. Hmm. Well, hmm. Good for him. That's piff. So, moving on. Did y'all hear? Yeah. So, oh. Oh, Rock Nation Entertainment. Okay. Okay. Partying with Brooklyn, Long Island University to launch the Rock Nation School of Music, Sports, and Entertainment. Big move right there. Later to begin oh, enrollment in fall of 2021 semester. Mm-hmm. And 25% of the incoming freshman class will receive Rock Nation Hope scholarships. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. How do you feel about this? I love it. It's a, good, it's a great awesome. move. It's a, it's a good move. But it's funny because a lot of people say, you know, back in the day that Jay-Z didn't give back. So I'm like, usually he did it on the low, but now he's doing a lot more just, you know, out in the open. Same thing with in, in your faces. Yeah. You know, people still saying that he's not, you know, supporting like the activists and all that stuff. But, but he has been doing that on the low too putting money in for bailing the protesters out in jail and all that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so he, he does, you know, put the money in on Black Lives Matter uh, chapters and all that. So, but this right here, this is definitely a good one, um, especially with Long Island University. So yeah, it's, 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 it's deeper than that though. I think it's, it's not just the money. Yes. Yeah. He is investing in something to educate people on music, mm-hmm. sports, and entertainment, which are three fields that, as black folks, are yes, some sir. of the most lucrative ones to get into, whatever your area yeah. of expertise is. You know true. That is true. And um, also, too, hopefully, um, definitely, you know, everybody, you know how we are. Oh, I want to be a baller. I want to be a singer. I want to be a rapper. I want to be an actor, you know. They, I want to be many, a director. Yeah. Not to many people uh, <laughs> wanted to uh, think about behind the scenes stuff or try to make their own business. Everybody focus on the artistry level of it. But it's like, yeah, everybody don't want to be a jack of all trades. The business. Yeah. You know, it's a lot to this business, you know. You can, and a lot of people get taken advantage of yeah. um, early in the game, uh, even well into their careers because of some things that they sign. Um, so, and I know it's probably a lot of stuff that you just can't learn sitting in a classroom, mm-hmm. but given the, the success that he's had and the influence that he had, he, he has had in the career that he's had, I would imagine that they're going to try to build a curriculum based off of real shit, real things that you need to understand. Especially, yeah, like I said. Is that the name of the class? Real shit one on one? True, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get that money. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, no, that won't be the name of the class, obviously, but. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, monetizing, being able to to monetize or de- develop an audience, mm. um, marketing, all of that stuff, um, contracts, yeah, yeah, ownership, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, money, taxes, you know, what I'm Finance. saying. Finance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, and it's going to be in university in Brooklyn. Yeah. Partner with the sense. deaf, you know? Yeah. What's not um, to like? No. I'm done. I can talk now, right? Okay. Cool. <laughs> So, I've always felt, well, for a while, I'll say, I felt like Jay is 
when it comes to hip hop, uh, he's one of the greats in the sense of he he's mastered the music side of it because he has multiple classics. You know, you know, you know uh, what he can do as far as the the skill of rapping. And on the business side, he's done great things with you know Rockefeller Records, Rockaway as a fashion joint, and um, well, uh, 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 like you said earlier, um, <clears throat> getting involved in uh, what what is that called? Um, is that like humanitarianism? Is that what I want to say? Lange, yeah. Yeah, you know, giving back to the community. Yeah, philanthropy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. philanthropy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, philanthropy. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I, th- I think that's pretty um dope, and that's why I think he's one of the greats. Um. And and we all know his background, oh, what yeah. he did before. Um, he got into music. You know what well. I'm saying? So. He's turning a negative into a positive. You know what I'm saying? And he's, I feel like he's one of the few that you can look at that has done, you know, that has given back to his community that, you know, you've seen where, where it's like, you where he's kind of hurt the community about selling drugs and things of that nature. And then once he got on, he, you know, he flipped stuff around, you know, and gave back to his community. Yeah. Had businesses and things of that nature. Mm. You know what I mean, and <clears throat> and so um, for him to do this, you know, uh, come together with this class at this uh, college, very dope. Um, like Tommy said earlier, school. there's a lot of things. I think, it's, that, I think it's a school. I'm sorry, to cut you off. Like, like he was at UMES, and it was like a school of finance or a school of business and curriculum and that. Like it's like I think it's like a whole program that is being built at this school. Mm. So it's more than just a class or a couple classes. You know what I'm saying? Oh well, if it's a program, major. then it's 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 dope. It's a it's a program or a major. It's major regardless. But when they say oh. the the when they say huh, when they say the Rock Nation School of oh, it's a school. Uh, yeah, the Rock Nation School of Music, Sports, and Entertainment, right? So this is a school, this is a program, might fit, or, well, actually, you like partnering, you know, partner with Long Island University in Brooklyn, so, um, so yeah, it might even be their own thing and they're just kind of saying, yeah, we'll, we'll partner with this school because they got the infrastructure, the school infrastructure already. And maybe it might be something that they ultimately build into and just be like, yeah, boom, this is it. This is our campus. This is our it university. Could be a yeah, you know what I mean? I'm yeah, if- no, that would be dope. Like LeBron opened a, a high yeah, school, he opened a, might open a, a, yeah. a university. You know I'm saying whole university. If, yeah, I wonder if Karis One still got his school. <laughs> I don't know. I don't either. Yeah. I didn't know he had a school. Yeah, he had a school. This well, is like a church or something. Well, it was, it was kind of like yeah. A cult? No, it was like the, the Temple of Hip Hop. Yeah, the Temple of Hip Hop. Oh. Yeah, it came out when I, a book and everything. Yeah. Yeah, it came out when he he um when um the Raptures rappers um yeah, Step Into the World came out. I got next album back in ninety seven, ninety eight, yeah. Ninety seven. Yeah. But continue what you gotta say, Mr. Sean. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Now, uh, and I was about to big you up <laughs> of what you were saying <laughs> earlier uh-huh. about um, um, how a lot of kids can can learn, you know, different things that they don't, you know, learn beforehand. Because you're right, um, 
Case in point, one of my favorite, or my favorite, 30 for 30 is the one called Broke. Where, you know, you yes. got these, these athletes, like, they just happy to get a deal. They, you know, when they on a team or whatever, and they sign these contracts and this big fat money, and they spend it on, you know, dumb stuff for the next thing you know, after a while, they owe taxes, they're broke, they know what to do, you know, because no one, no one actually showed them the way. We don't got so, it. So, um, so the fact that you know Jason has right. this has this program with the school, um, is like, yo, that that'd be dope. That way, like 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 you said it best with contracts, not only just with the contracts, but also the the terms and the vocabulary in these contracts. These kids don't know. You know what I mean? And what what it, you should be thinking about, what you should be looking for. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because that's another thing. A lot of these these contracts can take advantage of it because it's like you don't even know to be thinking about X, Y, and Z details. Um, yeah. You know, as far as like certain compensation and what have you. Um, and. Before you know it, you locked into something for five years and you're worth a hundred million and you only get twenty percent of that. Right. You know? Or, you know, or less. If that. You know what I mean? You know what I heard actually? This was um I'm not sure if this was on the radio or a podcast or something, but it was like for a hundred thousand streams. Uh, I think it was Apple Music pays, let's say, 800. Spotify pays 1,200. And Tidal pays 2,400. But wow. don't nobody want to fuck with Tidal, even though they pay the artists for more. And I was like, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I do know that it was like Tidal was the one that was paying like more than double what the others were paying the artists for a certain amount of Oh, yeah, 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 because you said 800 for one, yeah, 1,200 for the other, and 2,400, yeah. And, yeah. And, it's, and it's just a tough thing to do because uh, it's, the music industry is a tough situation, especially now, you know what I mean, because can't really tour. Nope. You know what I mean? They're trying to do the drive-in things, drive-in theaters as the new venue. Um, and certain people are trying to perform, I think, on their IG Live and stuff like that. And I guess they yeah. give out their, their Venmo or Cash App and stuff like that. That's like the only way. Because like Erica yeah. Badu, Erica, Erica Badu did that. Like I know some other artists, but um, yeah, that's like the only way they can like make money as of right now. Yeah, a lot of comedians are doing that too. Yeah. You know, they they go live and they give out the Venmo with a cash app and her go from there. Her, she did like a live like a live set and then she had like a money thing too. I think I think, but yeah, if they um some way to just help help them out. But yeah, it's crazy yeah. how especially these venues. I'm it's gonna be interesting to see who will survive from all this and, and like I already heard like reports of some of them you know filing for bankruptcy and all that. You mean like so. performance mm. uh, like uh, concert halls and things Yeah, like all those big ones and those big venues that we have in certain cities. Um and also to these music festivals, they ain't making the uh, it's sad too. It's just uh I mean if they can do virtually like like the Roost Picnic did, I think I think a lot of Palooza, no, a lot of Palooza, they're going to, um, they're going to do some virtual and play like old footage of recent, okay. from the past, a past of a uh, lot of Paloozas in the uh, previous years. Yeah, I saw an EDM festival that was doing their stuff um, on YouTube. Yeah. You know, so. Same thing like these film festivals, you know, they, some of them, they doing the virtual thing, so. Same thing with the Comic Con, how they started Comic doing the, yeah, the virtual. Yeah. So um, yeah, it sucks that you know we can't be there in, in the presence and you know listening to the music or cosplaying and all that. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this, especially when this pandemic, we're going to be really going to be over. 
Cause they said yeah. that as far as the music venues, they said they ain't gonna be happening until like what they say fall of two thousand twenty one. So Oh wow. That's if that's if they can't find a virus real oh, soon. Yeah, yeah. Find a vaccine. Find a, yeah. find a vaccine. Vaccine, yeah. vaccine, sorry. Find a virus. Vaccine. I did it again. Shit. If they let's say they do have a vaccine. Say it comes out December. 2020. They, they do have one. They they did the um, trial. They're testing. They're still testing. Yeah, they're still testing. But let's say they come out. They say, we good to go, America. We got the vaccine. It's available for anybody who wants it. Well, Y'all rushing in there to get that vaccine? I don't know. And also, too, the question is, well, no, to answer your question, but also they still, like, we're not sure if everybody's gonna, you know, get the uh, vaccine. I said it right. So uh, everybody yeah. ain't gonna get the vaccine. Everybody yeah, they, can't even get a damn test. Right. So it's like it's crazy. That's not fair. Same thing with you know, if testing should be free, so should be the vaccine. It can be. It depends on who, how, who has insurance or not, and all that. So. And also, see, they're talking about they want us to be the first guinea pigs and all that. So it's like. Surprise, know. surprise. You know when you saying? say us, what do you mean? Black people, Negroes, <laughs> African Americans. <laughs> Biggie Black, y'all. <laughs> Speaking of that. <laughs> oh, you don't? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I got more. So you got. You, 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 do you have something to add, Mr. Sean? <laughs> um, I actually was glad you brought up the Jay-Z thing initially because that brings us into another topic. Because, you know, we talked about two chains in the Rick Ross battle, right? Those guys are in their 40s. Jay-Z. True. Is 50. Mm-hmm. A couple weeks ago, there was a list that came out top 40 MCs that are over 40, over the age of 40. Yeah. Um, Brian, uh, he plays, it was the honor of uh, naming off the people. We could do it 40 to 1, 1 oh, to man. 40. Was this on, on, on Medium? Yeah, it was on an uh, yeah, okay. article. So I'm just going to go ahead and start off from 40 all the way down. What was the, let me cut you off, what were like the, I guess, qualifications for like a better <laughs> term? Like what, besides being over 40, like, you know, as far as like um, albums, they charted, stuff like that, like, well, the question they want the question that the, the reason why they did this because they want to ask the question who had the most impressive post forty run, and mm. they uh they base it off I guess the imp- yeah the impact the craftsmanship the evolution ability to keep a familiar sound fresh the rewarding output the momentum so like you know let me go ahead forty. Is wait, wait. So, so uh, there was no mention of bars. I mean, no. I mean, well, craftsmanship. Yeah. If you want to count craftsmanship, okay, okay. Yes. Just, just clarifying some things. Just clarifying yeah. some things. Very They make you know the craftsmanship. That's got to be part of the lyricism. So yeah. So let me go ahead with the forty. So number forty was P Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs. I seen on the list. Uh, I don't. That's why I laughed because when I first looked at, it, I said the number forty. Oh, <laughs> but in his defense, he had hits. He they didn't say he writers. Didn't say yeah, so they people. I don't believe the the the, the criteria included uh, original creation of the work they performed. Mm-hmm. 
So, yeah, no, if we're, like, you know, if we're leaving that out, and he's number 40 on the top 40 list, because you got to think, how many MCs is around that's over 40? So it's a good amount. It's a quarter. You'd be surprised. It's a lot. I mean, most of them was on this list, and then it's a few that had that didn't make this list. But um, I'm gonna go. Yes. Go ahead. So 39 is too short. 38, Buster Rhymes, and we're gonna get back. To, yeah, I, some of these rankings. Yeah, I'm I like, disagreed on that. Yeah. yeah. 37, yeah. 37, Juicy J from Three Six Mafia. Mm. 36, Jeezy. Yo, totally. Mm. Juicy J over Buster Rhymes. I tell you, that's what I'm saying. We, uh, we, uh, can I, can I, yeah, I'm just gonna continue to keep going. Yo, keep going, keep are you, going. are you serious? Yeah, okay. I'm a, yeah. This is egregious. <laughs> All right. Look at that big word. I know, right? Egregious. I know. College, right? college yeah. education. Blurred, son. <laughs> Thirty-six, Jeezy. Thirty, thirty-five, Cameron. Yo, <laughs> number. <laughs> 34. Oh, yo, we got to stop. We got to stop this. We have to stop this right here. Yo. Juicy J and Jeezy over bus. Hey, I'm, hey, hey, man, I'm, I'm, look, man, I'm just, I didn't make the list. No, we can't, we, we, no, man. Don't shoot the messenger. We just got to. I'm going to keep going. All right, 30, all right. 34, MF Doom. That's bullshit. Go ahead. Yo. Okay. 33. Rock Marciano. Bullshit. Go ahead. 32. A Wu Tang member. The Rebel, Inspector Duck. 31. Mm-hmm. Missy Elliott. 30. Get ready. Andre 3000. Mm-hmm. 29. Kanye West. 28. Another Wu member. Method Man, 27, Bun B, 26, Jim Jones, 25, Big Boy, 24, Get Ready, Nas, 23, Fabulous, 22, J Electronica, 21, Q-tip, 20, E-40. Okay, okay. 19. No, 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 no. no. We got to keep, keep going, man. Uh, we got to keep, we got to keep it going. 19, Snoop Dogg. 18, Fonte, which I was, hey, that's not, hey, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, kind of happy. Shout out to Fonte. Uncomfortable. 17, Jada Kiss. 16, DJ Quick. He, I mean, I, I, he, he, I mean. When the last time he put. 15, Ismail Butler, a.k.a. Um, it's Butterfly from Dig Over Planets. Um, Shabazz Palace. Yep. Yeah. 14, Fat Joe. 13, Raycon, 12, Common, 11, 2 Chains, 10, LP, 9, Styles P, 8, Rick Ross, 7, Eminem, 6, Ghostface Killer, 5, Killer Mike, 4, Black Thought, I'm I'm kind of happy with that. I'm, I'm I'm proud. Black Thought from the Roots. Number three, Pusha T. Hey, I made it wrong. Number two, Voice of Five Nine. Voice of Five Nine. And number one, who we just talked about? It's the Rock. Ho. We have the same name, spelled differently, and we're both Sagittarius. All right, Tommy, go ahead. Let it out, brother. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let it out. Wait, Wait, where was Nas? 
Nas was number uh he what, was twenty eight. Yeah, twenty no, yeah. Twenty four, <laughs> yeah, twenty five, something. Okay. Okay. I I can't twenty four. He was twenty four. Where was Kwali? Nowhere he wasn't on that list. Bullshit. At all. Most death fever. Yazin Bay. No, no. Neither one. Neither one. Nope. Neither. Where Rock Him at? You see that Doom. here Rock Him? No. Doom should have been in the top twenty. Uh, where, where Big at, Big Daddy King at? Rock him. Well, Big Daddy King ain't putting nothing in the group. Wow, Rock him ain't putting nothing in the group. Wow. I don't care. <laughs> he made it. You know they have it. I mean, I, I think Big Daddy King just drops, just dropped the single. LL. Said, I know. I'm saying. I'm not just speaking like. I mean, I got that. Drop that verse, but. I know. I know they so. haven't dropped albums, but still, the impact they made to the game. What about Will Smith then? Hey. That's exactly what I was about to say. He can put the heat passion in the half. I can't get jiggy right. with this shit. I got me out here caping for Will Smith now. I can't get jiggy with this shit. This bullshit. <laughs> Yo, this list is ridiculous, man. With Dr. Where's Dre. Red man, dog. I know Red Man. Red man has put some stuff out. Where, Eric Sermon. A lot of stuff. Eric Sermon just put out a project last year. Okay. There's no Tech Nine, and Tech Nine has been holding it down doing this thing since late '90s, man. That is bull crap. He is like the number one selling independent artist. Like, come on, you know how hard he tours? He has two warehouses full of merch that sells like crazy. And if I got a few, we'll put him on that list. Yeah, and I got That's a few folks. Cool, a few folks that if they were still alive, they would be in the list. Like, stop, uh, Sean P. Bird. Pop. Yeah. Biggie. Fife. Yep. Fife did all. But yeah, you know, Pop. rest in peace. But Rest uh, in peace to all of them. Tomorrow on this channel on YouTube L. called Full Blast Radio, they're going to do a Sean Price day. They're playing all Sean Price. So. Nice. Go be checking yeah. that out. But um, I ain't gonna lie. I was happy when I, well, some some ones I was like real so happy with the Fonte and some made sense, yeah. Some made Black, sense. Black Black Thought made the top five. Like what? I know that's right. I'm glad. I'm surprised Royce was that hot. Yeah, me too. Sense. Royce. Royce been putting out work for the past like what six years. Same thing with Pusher. So it was like longer. Yeah. You know. I was surprised with Pusher. I was surprised with Styles P that he made number nine. So late. Oh, he's been putting in work. Yeah, he's been putting in work. And um, he's about to come up with um, with um, beloved part two with uh, Dave East. And I didn't like how they um, well, you know, run the jewels. I know they t- uh, together duo, and you know, they yeah, wasn't man. they were they wasn't that, not that far from one another, but you know. Yeah, yeah, they should have just grouped them together. Yeah. yeah Yo, when did the, the, when the, the seven come out with with uh? Quali and Ghost. That was like three years ago? Two, three years ago? And yeah, Quali like won on the list. Yeah. Maybe 2017. Quali's they putting like us. And then, and then KRS, what, was, was KRS on the list? No. I'm not mad about that. What? He's still putting stuff out, yo. I know. He's still torn and everything, man. He Respect just dropped him. a project. So, Respect yeah. the teacher. Respect the teacher. Blast Master KRS One, man. Word. Boogie Down Productions will mm-hmm. always stay paid. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, um, Slug from Atmosphere. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mars. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's Planet a, Asia. It, it's just a list. <laughs> It's just but if list. you're going to make a list, be accurate. Know your stuff. Do your research before you put a list out. Yeah. I'm yes. looking. It says Royce. Best project was Book of Ryan. Yeah. Then he just came out with some. Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Was and that's the, pretty good too. Yeah, it is good. Album. Yeah. All right. Quick ain't put nothing out in years. Huh? Who you say? Quick ain't put nothing out in years. Yeah, he hasn't.
But it is what it is. And you put Scarface in there, man. What's up with that? Oh, man. I question this list at every turn. Yep. Like, that's all I got to say. Um, hold on for a second. I'll be right back. So, you know, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, Tommy. Hey. We'll put a little. Bring me alarm. The caterpillar keeps firing. Whoa. I don't think this is the best song on this project, but nah. According Actually, to it's, it's one. It's one of them. It's one of them. If I didn't do this, where in the fuck would you be at? See, there's a difference between us. What I spit arenas, you would trip from my penis. I eat lions and sit hyenas. You number one when it comes to slaughtered mics. I'm trying to be. Nah. I rather listen to God's spirit. Yeah, but that last the last album he put out um this year was good though. The Cut allegory, name. right? Yeah, yeah. Cause he, 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 he said produced, he did all the beats. Mm. Would you say it was it was as good as this one? Um to me, um Book of Ryan was cool. Was like uh mm. but I gotta listen to that album. I mean it wasn't a bad album, the allegory. It was it really was. Cause he was really talking about a lot of uh, social, like conscious stuff on that one. But all I know is this flow in this pencil. The Lord is my shepherd, the devil's my dopamine and pension. So, the industry said mm -hmm. I had to be an alcoholic who be having threes. Mo better blues, 30 years. Wish I can go back yeah. to my old school and slap the teachers. All I had to do was the floor was for you, sir. Thank you. So, yeah. Four days ago, it was um, the 30th anniversary of Mo Better Blues, Spike Lee's. Um, third fourth fourth film that he um fourth motion picture that he put out in, in august of 1990 starring denzel washington his sister joey lee um he had of course you know rusty snipes uh mm -hmm. bill nine mm -hmm. oh is this small better blues yep directed by bill franklin no shut Kurt up franklin shut <laughs> up shut up <laughs> What he was talking about, ladies and gentlemen, he's Spike confusing Lee. Mo Better Blues to Devil, the Devil in the Blue Dress. Directed by Carl Franklin. Carl Franklin. Yes. Not Kurt Franklin. Carl, Carl not, Franklin doesn't get enough love out here. Yeah, he's at Ben Franklin, Kurt Franklin, <laughs> Carl Jr. Well, I don't he know. Franklin's involved, so, yeah, you know, he's a, I don't he's, know. Carl Lewis, Carl Weathers, I don't know, Carl Jr. <laughs> Burgers, I don't know. He said everybody. Carl Winslow. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Harriet. You know what I'm saying? Pick up the Urkel. Cool. I know, right? The OG blur. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, the OG. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Mo Better makes it Mo Better. That's crazy. Mo Better makes it. It's definitely Yo, crazy. My bad, you cut you off. When you, when you did the post about it, you should have found that 11 color skit. The Mo Better Butter joint. Hmm. <laughs> I, I, I very remember that. I think I've, I got to vaguely yeah. remember it. I think I do. I do okay. vaguely. You said very. Vaguely. Okay, vaguely. There we go. I want to. No, I'm saying that. I've, who? What was it? Who Tommy was, Davidson was Spike, and he ran a store or something like that. And he and he introduced people to his new project, and it was Mo Butter Butter. And it was like his face, and out of the mouth came butter, or something like that. And it was right when Mo Better Blues came out. I, okay. I, I could see if I could find it, yeah. but but I, I do remember that. Okay, cause I do remember it was another. I do remember to do the right thing when they did. Yeah. So yeah, but um. Somebody just did a do the right thing. Oh, uh, last season on the last OG, they did a, but the season finale was like 
uh, a tribute to do the right thing, and that was pretty dope. Mm. But yeah, but um, thirty years, so um, it was right. definitely a a personal favorite of mine because. Mm-hmm. That, because that film that put, they put that put me on to like jazz music. I was eight years old when um the movie came out, and then you know my uncle he had the soundtrack, and um he gave it to me and my father at the time, and then he made a copy, and I think yeah I listened to that. And then that, and then also on the soundtrack was the uh, Gangstar yeah, jazz, jazz thing, jazz thing, a jazz thing uh, song. Oh okay. And then you know that for definitely I uh, you know I appreciate and admire any hip hop artist or R and B or electronic producer or whatever that samples jazz. So yeah, and yeah. I thought the cinematography was dope by Ernest Dickerson. The score by Spike's father, Bill. Um, but yeah, it was it was a nice story all around. You know, the love triangle, and how it's connected to his obsession obsession with, you know, jazz music, uh, Denzel's character. So yeah, it was definitely a special film. One of, definitely one of my. I put it down as my second because I got Do the Right Thing and Malcolm X as tied up in for number one, but. Uh, after that, it's definitely more better. Number one Spike Lee film, you mean, for you? Or just number one, period? Spike Lee film. Gotcha. Spike Lee joint, excuse me. There you go. Get it yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I remember watching this um, in my late 20s, I want to say. Because I, I never seen it, and I, and I felt like when it came out at the time, like I was too young to understand that, <laughs> you know what was going on. And so when I watched it in my twenties and, and around at that time, I was already listening to old school jazz. Like I was listening to the Cold Trains and the Miles Davises, um, Herbie Hancock, you know, guys like that, uh, Thelonious Monk. So like to, to, to see, to, to actually watch that, and that kind of like inspired me to listen to it even more. I listened to it with a with a with a better ear and and, and more of an appreciation of it. It's dope. Um, <clears throat> and and I was just thinking like I, I kind of always bring this up when it comes to Denzel. I'm excuse me, Spike Lee movies. Um, whenever I have this, I have a discussion about them. I've always felt like a lot of his films could be like, you know, Broadway or if not Broadway, just a, you know, stage production, you know, something you might see or hear is the Hippodrome. That's the big well wow. production joint here and, you know, things like that. Cause I, I've seen where certain movies where I didn't think that were like that good to be a, Broadway play become a Broadway play. Like there's a Broadway play of Bring It On, the cheerleader joint. There's yeah. a Broadway play of Legally Blonde. Yeah, there's some of them that still don't make sense. Like Right. There's one of the wedding singer. That makes sense. Things of that nature. I mean, yeah, I, I can see it. Okay. I forgot. I think I think the Legally Blonde one is like, okay. And then it's like I think Yeah. yeah. But um I did hear I think Spike it was a I don't know if um if I remember he said this because he is working on this because um Robert Townsend is working He's on doing the five heartbeats. Yeah, five heartbeats. Yes. So um Spike, I think Spike is working on trying to make school days a that musical. Be so Cause awesome. it, it it already was a musical. Yeah, it already was a musical. So Right. So yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see that. And I would love for them to do it where he can tour that at like black colleges. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be dope. Or, or give college black college students, you know, discounts like an HBCU yeah. discount or something. Yeah, I yeah. think that'd be dope. Um, I so can yeah, see more better. That. I can yeah, see, I can see more better blues yeah. as as a one hundred percent a play, a stage play. Same yeah. thing with do the right thing. Of course, do the right thing. Like I said, um, Jungle Fever. Before, t- Jungle Fever. Yeah. Yeah, that that would Definitely. be 
that would be your modern day uh, West Side Story kind of, you know. Um, but we do the right thing. It's like it's simple as far as set wise. You have what, maybe three set changes. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of monologues. Yeah. Um, you know mm-hmm. the 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 how things like you said, kind of cinematography, and also how people were dressed, the costumes yeah. and all that. Yeah. The wardrobes was dope for that time. Yeah. You know, and it had very impactful scenes like. Like if you get the right person to play Radio Raheem or break down that love hate joint, like fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even the riot scene, because all of that speaks to what's going on mm. now with that racial tension, you know. They go, Sal, how come there's no black people on the wall, man? What's up with that? You know? Bugging out, bugging out, bugging, bugging, bugging out. You know what I mean? So uh uh that's the whole thing. I'm sorry, that's the only ones I can see, I can picture them doing a... a you don't see Malcolm X? Uh, I mean, you can, but I don't know. It's like... Mm-hmm. I'm, just, I'm just asking. I don't know, I'm just saying because they already done like so many, like, it wasn't just a Malcolm X. It was more like... What's the uh what's the one uh I forgot it's called the, I think it's called the mountain to the mountaintop where it's, no no that's the one it's like the last uh it was like they always had like those plays where it's like a the last conversation or the last days with you know Dr. Yeah, King or yeah. Malcolm X. Yeah. Or like you it, there'd be plays where they had them two together, like having like this little uh face to face conversation about certain things. Now you got me thinking about the campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was, I was trying to, I was trying to work my way around that, trying to like be still be serious about it. But yeah, you just said it. I just buzzed out. I was like, yeah. nah, it just popped in my head. West yeah. Side, it's the best side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, but no, uh, I don't know, Malcolm X. You can. I mean, it's just like. There's like so many like plays that's like I saw that they you know they did chronicle Malcolm X story. It wasn't called Malcolm X. It was something else. Or like they, like I said before, they find something like a fictional, like they blended Dr. King and Malcolm X having a, you know last conversation, or whatever. Before they yeah, so they done that before as well. So I don't know. Um, How's that watermelon? Yeah, I know right. <laughs> stereotypical. Don't, I'm not a stereotype. No, he ain't got no chicken with him, so he. All right. I know, right? I don't see no cornbread either. <laughs> so you, you good over there, Tommy? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. Hey, I guess he didn't That's like. How me. you feel? I know. I guess. I so. I, I, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to. Just hopefully everything good. All right. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Um, so yeah, man. Uh in closing, congrats to Spike and the thirtieth anniversary of um Mo Better Blues. And man, yep. just I was gonna say, um, those that's listening, don't worry. Tommy didn't leave. He's uh having technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. Technical gentlemen. difficulties. Yeah. You will hear him, but he will be back. He might have a new backdrop. <laughs> he might be in a Diddy video <laughs> since he's so, number since he's number forty in, in the list. I can see him. I can see him doing the more better. Uh, I mean, more money, more problems. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, get a get a cheese grater, uh, grater, and just put it. <laughs> you know, you saw that mean. He's like, yeah, the um, music videos in the '90s they had the cheese grater in the backdrop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, yeah, we can go ahead, move on to the next one. On to the next. On on to the. Speaking of black creators and directors and writers, mm-hmm. tell us about uh, Miss Insecure herself, Issa Rae, and Jordan Peele. So yeah, so they um coming up it's um they're gonna collaborate i think they're gonna even gonna be um i don't know who's 
or they're gonna work behind the scenes. I don't know who's going. I guess Jordan's going to direct or produce or whatever, or they both gonna be producers. But um, it's gonna be a new upcoming film on the Universal Pictures called Sinkhole, which will tackle the idea of female perf- perfection and identity. And it's based. Ooh. It's based off. Of, it's based off a story. Not by Lisa Ray. It's about a young family that follows into a dream home only to find a sinkhole in the backyard. The sinkhole provides a mystery which proves to fix broken and damaged things, including people, and make them perfect. Hmm. Mm. So, yeah, so. Uh, that's deep, bro. Yeah, it's deep. So, we'll see how that. And works. that's not a book or nothing? That's not no, like it's, a good book. Yeah, but it's um, based <laughs> off a short story that. Um, I know a uh, black woman. I don't want to slaughter her name, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, I want to say Leah Crow. It is, but um, it. yeah, um, it's L E Y N A. Yeah, and Crow. Yeah. She, yeah, and um, yeah. Crow, and her last name is Crow, but instead of C is a K. So, oh, okay. So yeah, so um. I don't know. It's gonna be. Um, I ain't gonna lie, man. This um from the Janelle um, Monet join. Um, actually, that's gonna be on demand. Uh, Atabellum. I don't know if you heard about that. It was like a um. It was supposed to came out. Uh, first pull came out this spring, but due to the pandemic, I pushed back to August. Now it's gonna be on demand. If you saw the trailer, it was like the, the producers of Get Out and. And us with a and um she's in it. Um it's like I don't it didn't you know they didn't tell you more about the story. It looks like she was kidnapped and all of a sudden she's um she find herself dressed up in you know slavery times, got the slavery clothes in it, in a, and they're in a plantation, things of that nature. Yeah. So I definitely think she got either got kidnapped and you know, whoever kidnapped her want these like you see her and these other black folks, you know, in the slave dressed up as slaves and everything and then in this big old plantation they over there picking cotton and all that and they yeah and I think she like trying to get herself because she like she's like drugged up she still she thinks she's you know in those times but yeah it, it looks like a psychological thriller type yeah so yeah it's probably came out this I think it was probably came out like in April but it, um you know like I said the pandemic then it got pushed back to August and then they decided, you know, put it on demand. I forgot when, but uh, yeah, I think like in September. So, so damn, I just thought about it. Like between, like I said, between those, that type of film, like we getting like a lot of films that's like, you know, all respect to Jordan Peele who had like, you know, with us and Get Out, that like, you know, that took the elements. That took the elements of horror and psychological thrillers yeah. and then you know tackled the themes of race identity race. of yeah. anything something original i mean how i ain't gonna lie i'm not a, the biggest horse i hate horror film, but it's like i so i get out i One love of that it. stuff is like really 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 like horror, horror. yeah you know, i mean i'm saying that, like, like i said but he took the elements of it i mean yeah, they, yeah but he's it, a I mean, big horror guy he, he, yeah he's openly admitted yeah, so but it's like I mean I looked at both of them as both psychological thrillers. There he is. Hey man, I'm sorry about the joke. <laughs> Fuck you, Brianna. <laughs> nah, it's all good, so, man. <laughs> so, so now you get it. It's just a joke. I like I how you started doing that in that whisper. I know for real, right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like can't like he ain't gonna mute it. I ain't gonna mute it. <laughs> <laughs> I know for real. <laughs> like like that Madea, you better get your ass to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like I was saying though, like we got like especially you know the with between Osabellum and it's not like like we got like shows like that Jordan Peele pr- uh, produced like uh, what's that uh, Hunters and the Twilight Zone and Twilight Zone, yeah. And we got like some other stuff that they trying to like people are really creative on like the psych- psychological thrillers and like how they trying to, you know, tackle of course race. And they, oh yeah, like Lovecraft Lovecraft Country. 
on HBO. I want to check that out. So is that is that is that out? No, it come out the sixteenth of August. Okay. I'll put and, that on um, the show. So you got that, and it deal, and then the Candyman. But it's sad though, and it might get since you know if a lot of things. Well, they haven't said next year. I don't know. They haven't said yet. They haven't like all those films that they pushed back to later this fall. They haven't said anything yet. So it's like so far, um, mm. they I don't know. People still hoping that we can still see something <laughs> during the holidays. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because yeah. I actually got an email from. Regal Cinemas about their new guidelines. I meant to read them and and then like send y'all the link, but mm-hmm. um, I'll uh yeah. T- so. Uh, before the weekend's over, without you know, I'll, I'll send it to y'all. And, you know, of course, with anything nowadays, you know, with your own judgment, you know what I mean. Yeah. You do that because like even with um, I was on Baltimore Comic Con's website and. It still seems like it's still going to happen. Hmm. Which I'm like, you sure? Yeah. But anyway, back to the whole. It was October, was it? Yeah, October 23rd through the 25th. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to say I don't think so. And also today, nobody have no no convention. They like, why are they going to be the only ones? I have no idea. I guess they think about a fall. Things is going to die down. No. I don't trust nothing, yo. No, I don't trust nothing either. All right. And he said, they're going to be the only ones that actually, because um, I don't think, I think, uh, what's McCall has pushed back Awesome Con. Yeah. So, and like I said, nobody ain't trying to do the large gatherings at um, conventions as yet. Word. But, um, but yeah, but speaking of uh, Candyman and superheroes and all that shout out to nia de costa who is the director of the upcoming candy man 2020 film she um is going to be the first black woman to direct a marvel film she's Ooh. going to be directing the upcoming D- captain marvel 2 i didn't see the first one i still haven't seen it yet <laughs> i'm gonna i'll say i'm gonna check it out listen man I, I love how people react like it was just man. Who yeah. was this man. <laughs> it's an origin story. You're not going to get all the action and all that. You're going to learn about how this character became this hero and how they got their powers and learn from it. A lot of those, it ain't, you know, with the action and quick with the action like that. Be patient. Like Shazam was a, was an origin story. You might as well say, and it was a damn good movie. It was. And a lot of people said Shazam, even though his original name was Captain Marvel is better than the Marvel. Cause they both came out around the same time. So the same time yeah. So they said it. A lot of people said Shaz- Shazam was better than Wait, it. it was. Yeah, it was. And I mean, and, and it's very rare that a DC movie is better than a Marvel movie. Yeah. You know. I think, I'm not sure if it. Hands. You okay, bro? Yeah, you know, just remember that part in Shazam where it was like hands. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Did I say my name? Billy. Shazam. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. So yeah, so um, I'm not sure who had the most, um, who did well, who did better in the box office because they both had like kind of. It might have been Captain Marvel just because it was the MCU movie. Yeah, um, cause they both. I think Captain Marvel was like kind of like the weakest, uh, out of all you know from that came out. Like, like that was the one that like had. I'd the, agree with that. The weakest, uh, um, like amount as far as the box office. I like how yeah. Tommy goes in and out. Like, yeah. it's the, uh, it's like the drive-through. Yeah, yeah. guys, young. Do y'all still have the, uh, the? <laughs> y'all still got the Whopper Deluxe over there? No, sir. <laughs> oh dang! Not, just the Whopper Junior with y'all. cheese and I, the ice cream machine. I'm about to, I'm about to do, I'm about to do I'm about to do Wayne's World. Can I get a McFlurry? Can I get a McFlurry? 
Hey, Sean, I'm about to do Wayne's World, too. Uh, yeah, can I get a burger? Uh, and a burger. And a jelly pie. And two. No. <laughs> so let me get this straight. You want a burger or two fries? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. But, um, yeah, man. Um, Congrats to her though, because um, yes, congrats. She wasn't she wasn't the first black woman to direct a superhero film. That goes shout outs to Gina Prince by the Wood, who direct who directed um Netflix The Old Guard, the um comic book. I'm sorry, the first. Oh, she was Brian the first Ronald black woman. Yeah, 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 the first. She was the first black woman to direct a comic book. And that was recent. Um, okay. Yeah. So. Like history, 2020. Feeling for peace. And she and you know they talking about the sequels already. So yeah. yes. Ready. Cause it did well on, on Netflix. I want to read the graphic novel. Yeah, me too. But um, I'm happy for her. So I'm hopefully um, hopefully she, I mean they just said that she signed on. Hopefully she continues to be the director till the whole thing is finished. Hopefully it be no creative differences with Marvel or the cast or nothing. Hopefully she got some creative control. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you know, Marvel got their way of saying what, how they want the film to be done, but hopefully they still let her, you know, come up with her ideas the same way like they did with Ryan Coogler and all them. I was about to why? say, she to talk to Ryan Coogler. I was going to ask, why is it always such contention between Marvel and the directors? I don't know. At first, originally, you know I mean? it was like, because they, because like originally, you know, they could. I read this article. They were talking about how they wasn't getting like they they were trying to get like filmmakers that like was definitely um, vision was outside the box and storylines and things of that nature. That's why they they hot they they I don't know let Ryan Coogler did his thing and like pretty much give him the creative freedom to like have his own crew as well. Because usually um it just be like they sign on the director. They Marvel got already got the crew and the the production designer, the composer, the uh, the writer sometimes, all that together. It's just like, yeah, we just want a director. But, you know, Ryan, he had his um, people from the composer to the costume designer and who he wanted. And then, look, they all won Oscars. Um, the costume design and the production designer, the composer, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and they was in Marvel and Kevin Feige was really, you know, impressed with the um, Ryan Coogler story, how he, you know, he did with Black Panther, talking about the, you know, the the struggle, the uh, uh, between identity between you know African and African Americans and all that, and how he yeah. brought the socially and political elements into it as well. But yeah, but um, go ahead, Sean. So pretty much, Ryan Coogler did the uh, the Martin You So Crazy joint. Excuse me, but can you tell us yeah. where the toothpaste is? <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know, like, it's funny because, <laughs> like, I remember when Ant-Man, the first Ant-Man, um, Igor Wright, who I, you know, I highly love. He, Igor Wright, Igor Wright, he, yeah. Wright, he's directed, you know, Shaun of the Dead and uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Baby Driver, um, Hot Fuzz, yeah, Hot Fuzz. So, um, it, you know, he was signed on until, you know, I think before they started production and he just, you know, he had some creative differences with, you know, with Marvel and then all of a sudden Peyton Reed took over, but he still, you know, cause he wrote, um, Edgar, Edgar Wright, he's, he wrote the, uh, concept, the story for uh, the Ant, the first Ant-Man, and they, they continue to give him his credit, but he's, I think they made some changes and let Paul Rudd make some changes too on some things, but yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, you know, you had like Ava DuVernay, she was just, she was like one of the like early choices for Black Panther until that. she had a meeting, she said she wasn't, yeah, it didn't go well. So I remember F. Gary Gray was like, you know, he was going to be, you know, talk to play in the direct and then all of a sudden they decided it was between him or Ryan and so they were like yeah like the Ryan Coogers so, I don't know well we'll see I mean hopefully and also today trying the best they can as far as the diversity behind the scenes Marvel 
Same thing with um, DC as well. And the, and the Star Wars universe too, which is um, very kind of surprising. So hopefully, um, you know, we see the changes and also too, hopefully um, it'd be, you know, for the good and hopefully, you know, a lot also be very successful. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I definitely agree. I got a feeling that Captain Marvel 2. Um, Can't hear you, Ms. Sean. Under her... Can't hear you. One second. Gotcha. Okay. Mm. I'm back. Yeah, I think that. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, Captain Marvel 2 will be a, a good movie um, under her direction. Because mm-hmm. um, I think that's when, uh, no, when does Monica Rambeau come in? Not this one. Which was one that, is it? Was Which it? one that Monica Rambeau is in? She's going to be on WandaVision. WandaVision, oh, okay. Yeah, but okay. They, they say that. Um, but there's a possibility she could be in Captain Marvel yes. 2 or? Fine as Tiana Paris. You hear that emphasis? Yes! Finally! Okay. <laughs> you did sound like that. Uh, I'm saying she is fine. Though. The facts. But, like, the mic and how you sounded in the mic, it was just, it was a strong emphasis. <laughs> the power but, of Yeti. Uh, <laughs> the power of Yeti. <laughs> Cut the check, Yeti. Um, so <laughs> Yeti Mike <any> sponsors, <laughs> uh, <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> yeah, we are hungry. Please let us in. We I know, hungry. right? <laughs> hey, open the door, lock it. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Tupac, rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, man. No, um. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be dope. I can't wait, man. Just, just period. Just to check out these, um, you know, the movies in the MCU because they have done, they've been on a roll lately, you know, with all the films that they've had. I think, me personally, the weakest movie that they've done was uh, Ant Man versus Wasp. I mean, Ant Man and Wasp. Mm-hmm. Um, well, like I say, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't. Um... Haven't seen uh, Captain Marvel. I, mean, I thought, yeah, I thought it was all right, Ant Man and the Wasp. I thought it was cool. I mean, yeah, it could have been a better. It was no real plot to it. It was yeah. just there. Yeah. But it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's still found a way to make it entertaining in a, in a way, but even though the, uh, the villain was, you know. It had its funny moments and all yeah. that. And yeah. stuff, but it was, I felt like, I, you know, I, I could have, you know, I could have lived without it for a for, Mm-hmm. So, right yeah, I don't know. But yeah, man. Uh, again, props to her for you know being being a director mm-hmm. for the Captain Marvel too. Can't wait to see what happens with that. With the um, I think I think I think the trailer came out for uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, right? It did. Did it? I, th- yeah. I thought it did. No, no it didn't. No. I've been hearing stuff that it's been going on, so I, I thought a trailer came out. So, mm-hmm. well, we know that most... Black Marvel is coming out. Well, t- probably November if it's. I still got the November date. Black Black Widow. Black, Black Widow. Yeah, Black Widow. Oh, okay. So you said Black Marvel at first. Um, Black Widow. So, um, yeah, still got the date in November. So, hopefully. Okay. Um, now, question. Because mm-hmm. we're talking Disney stuff. Marvel, you know, Marvel's owned by Disney. Disney just uh, announced that Mulan will be on Disney Plus yeah. for $30, which is Can $1 million percent. <laughs> Can I get yes. it? It is nope. Anyway, I don't know. Could you, uh, if they do that for Black Widow, would you put up thirty dollars? 
I'll put up ten dollars and come to your house. <laughs> I'm fine with it. Get them oh. Tyson's wings from BJ's. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? A couple drinks, maybe some fries. Get some out of French fries. Or <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bum bum. Yeah, bum bum in my resident voice. You know? I- I don't know. It's like they trying the best they can to like their budget they had for both Mulan and Black Widow. I know yeah. both of them is o- over two hundred movies. Yeah, yes. so they trying way trying make way to get that money back. But they are um as far as like Mulan, even though it's gonna be on Disney Plus in the U.S., they still gonna play it in theaters overseas. Okay. And especially China, because they, they they were trying to um cause China. It, yes China, so um they was trying to you know make a big splash over there, especially with the you know the representation. So so but I don't know, man. To answer your question, I I don't know that's what I'm saying. If you already got Disney Plus, that means we got a okay. Oh yeah, pushing another. Tw- well, I still got it for free, but. If I think I think by the time Black Widow comes out, I think my free trial is over with, and then they get and they start charging me. Yeah. So, so I think if it, if that happens, and let's just say they do that, they charge people like thirty dollars. Yeah. I'll be paying thirty seven dollars. Yeah. So um, I mean, I'll, to be honest with you. You know, I, I love Scar Jo as an actor, as an actress, excuse me. And she kicks a butt in that role as Black Widow. But I don't know, like, I wouldn't mind waiting till it's on DVD or something like that, to be honest with you. I mean, I kind of um, I kind of don't see why they can't put it on Disney Plus. I mean, as far as like for them to help you know with that budget they put out yeah as far as putting the extra 30 in there i don't i don't know the, uh, it, it, it kind of it kind of goes back to what tommy was saying even though he was joking i can see people being like hey yo come through the crib you know i got the big tv i got the yeah. surround sound you like a pay-per-view you know? thing yo i i wasn't joking <laughs> that's what i oh, would do. <laughs> think like like Mulan would be like the new fight parties, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the, actually, though, but, the coronavirus, but that's the only, the, the corona, the rona's still out there. So, you know, I like you how you went in and out. Yeah, like, for real. You can't pick a boo behind this. I know, for real, right? I'm, I know, right? I'm, on my, <laughs> I'm on my Kenny Smith, you know what I'm saying? On that, the big boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going in the dome, y'all. I'm going in the dome. I got nobody to race, though. But uh, yeah, yeah, man, that's the only thing. The coronavirus. Yo, you should have something. you should have the Busta Rhymes and Janet uh video backdrop, and you'd be like the liquid people. Man, I make him, make him. Go back and forth, but uh, yeah. What, what, can, what, can we focus? Happy. Can we focus? What you are teaching now? I know, right? For real. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that actually that probably will be happening a lot, but I think it would be happening. It'll be happening less, and it'll, it it won't be like a whole party kind of situation. Like you might get like three, four people come through that you really you trust has wow. been like really yeah. really good and really you know, yeah. As far as like they're they're uh, you know trying not to contract the coronavirus. But um, and yeah, you know what I'm saying. You you probably just break even. That's all it's going to be. I was thinking about it like that. Come on, fight like five, maybe ten people come through. Mm. If I pay ten dollars, fifteen dollars, you know, you might make a little bit of money on that on top of that More. thirty. Yeah. Uh, I guess the yeah. coronavirus is risking all of that though. So yeah. So let me go ahead and um talk about an upcoming film that hopefully, well, it was supposed to came out 
around this time, but um, they're not sure right now because they, you know, you know that they just dropped the trailer for it uh, yesterday. You know, before you get into it, yeah, it, it's fun. I'm, you know what? No, go ahead. I'm gonna tell my story after you. Yeah, I think it'd be better. Okay. Um, we have um the trailer to, well, finally they having a Fred Hampton biopic that chronicles not pretty much his whole life, just pretty much, you know, his last days and, you know, especially his um, assassination and things of that nature. So, um, the name of the movie is called Judas and the Black Messiah. Originally it was called Jesus Was My Homeboy. Wow. Yeah. So um, it stars Dan Kalula from Get Out, Us, Queen of Slim, and another, Black yeah, Black Panther. And also, um, it also stars Lakeith Stanfield, Atlanta. The young Sam, ja the young Sam Jackson of this generation, because he's been in everything. Yeah, Atlanta, uh, Get Out. Dope. Uh, sorry to bother you. Oh that yeah, awesome that's on that's on Netflix. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. Uh, yeah, um, it's on Hulu. Yeah, yeah. The photograph. What else? I can think. Go on and on. He been a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, man. A yeah. lot of stuff. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So, Daniel Kula is playing um, Fred Hampton, Fred Hampton. and um, Keith Keith Stanfield is playing William O'Neill, who was the. Um, informant from the FBI who was uh, undercover as the bodyguard of Fran Hampton. Mm. So, yeah. But if you know the whole story, you know the whole story. I'm not going to spoil it for everybody. So, yeah. But um, what you got to say, Sean? You know, it was funny last night because during the battle uh, during the versus battle, Tommy was in the group chat like, yo, who watching the versus the two chains versus Rick Ross? I'm like, it's me. You know, I got my wing stop. I got, I got my Zoe jersey on. You know, it's popping. Let's go. Mm -hmm. You know? And then, right after I said that, B goes, Rio's like, hey, when y'all get a chance, check out the trailer <laughs> for the new Fred Hampton movie with Daniel Kaluuya and Lakeith Stanfield. And I'm like, we over here trying to be ratchet. This nigga want to get righteous. Talk about some bad yeah. Fred Hampton. Me right now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Terrible timing. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Heart was in the right place, though. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I did watch it um, earlier today. And let me tell you, man, um, it was, that's probably one of the most powerful trailers I've ever watched. Yeah, I, I had chills. <laughs> that, that was like the way it was. Yes. Like they were chanting and they were yes. just you felt it. You and, know? and Daniel, I ain't gonna lie, I was a little skeptical of him playing um, Fred Hampton because that's not who I pictured. If they did a biopic, and then um, also to you know, I wasn't I, I wasn't like these those folks about you know oh, why every British black British actor, person got to play a black yeah. American. But if you want to talk, figure, we can, we can yeah. talk about that uh, later uh, later. But yeah, but um, I I mean I, I I think he's a great actor, um, Dan Kalula, and he's um dope. and also too when those British actors, when they, um, some people, they, like, it'd be funny how black Twitter, they, like, really be on and, like, how they, their accents are and... Black Twitter is on everything. Yeah. They need to shut the hell up sometimes. So, like, they already talking about how he doesn't carry the full, the, uh, the full accent of how, um, Fred Hampton talked, but he does got a little, like, especially in that trailer. Like, um, e even though, um, it's a, someone on Twitter, they say they talked to Fred Hampton's son, Fred Hampton Jr. And yes. he, he was cool with um, Hulu playing Hampton. 
So I mean, it was this long thread of uh, post tweets that um, that I forgot the person's name, but anyway, but um, yeah, when he uh he did picked up some of his um like you know Fred Hampton's uh mannerism and also the way how he talk, and um, yeah, I'm yeah, it was definitely chilling, like just the chanting. I am a revolutionary. And then also too, they had a class that you you can't kill a revolutionary. You can kill a revolutionary, but you can't kill the uh, uh, revolution like that. And you know, you can't you can kill freedom fighter, but you can't kill the freedom I mean, like that. Yeah, it was like he actually like you can actually hear his definitely in um, Brad Hampton and that. But hopefully, um, like I said, oh yeah, Ryan Coogler he produced it. Um, it's directed by Shaka King. Um, I think this is his first film. I'm not familiar with um like other stuff he did. I think this is like his first major film. Oh, okay. I was more actually what his background was, like what it's nah, I, I don't I ain't, I ain't get much. I ain't do that research. Okay. But um definitely um yeah, it's supposed to came out like I think around this time, like August, and then it's gonna be pushed it got pushed back and um um they hoping that they could uh probably hopefully like maybe February, that'd be dope. Like Black History, you know, around February, and hopefully, um, if everything's all good, I was thinking maybe, maybe in the fall, and that way he can probably get an Oscar. No, 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 that's the thing though. The Oscar, they um, they pushing the ceremony. It's not going to be on March. It's going to be, I want to say April. Cause they trying to give oh, just a month, uh, April or May, but they trying to like add more room for like those that has been films that has been pushed back hopefully you know give them but they are looking at like films that are already on netflix and other streaming market and, and on demand and they try to get them recognition as well so but i heard it got put yeah it got put it ain't gonna be in march it's gonna be i think it was like april or may or one of them i forgot it was one of them gotcha. but yeah but mm. but yeah the trailer is definitely dope yeah, it's definitely. It is. And um, hopefully, mm-hmm. um, hopefully, I mean, have it has the potential definitely to um get some nominations. And um, it got a nice cast too. It has um, well, you didn't. Well, they show like little bit pieces of the other actors. So you got like you know um Ashton um Sanders from Moonlight. Oh, um, he's in there. Yeah, he's in it. He was he was there for like a brief second, but he was here on shades. He was in the back, but yeah, with the beret and all that. He's one of the Black Panthers. They got gotcha. um, Algie um Smith who played Ralph Tresvant on the new edition. He was ah. in Give. He was in um he's on um HBO's um Before You. Um, okay, I know. Who you know. Yeah. Um, who else? Um, Jesse. Um, the white the white guy that plays the FBI agent. Um, uh, his his name is yeah. Jesse. Yeah. Uh, Plymouth. He was in the um the joint with De Niro and Pesci. Yeah. yeah. He played Pacino's son in that joint. Yeah. And he was also in Game Night. Great yeah. Movie. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I heard Martin Sheen in it. An Observer and... Report. Yeah, Observer Report. Yeah, I think uh, I looked at the um like the Your IMDb. Like... Yeah, and also uh, Wikipedia, if that counts. Uh, uh, Martin Sheen is in it, too. Yeah, Martin Sheen, he's in it. He's playing, he's probably playing um, J. Edgar Hoover. So that's going to be, uh, that's going to be interesting. Okay. But, um, but yeah. yeah, but, um, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, um, like I said, hopefully he gets some nominations and hopefully um, it do well in the box office. But yeah, sure. I I definitely watched that trailer like a, I don't know how many times because that's definitely like it, a lot of people on Facebook were saying how tri- chilling it was and how it, like it definitely got you in that moment. So, you, Tommy, did you see it? Yeah. Um, it now the the title of it yeah. makes a lot more sense to me now because it seems uh, Daniel Kal- how do you pronounce his last Kalula. name? Kalula. Kalula. Yeah. Um, it's clearly very prominent as he's playing Fred Hampton. Yeah. But it looks like Lakeith Stanfield is really going to be like the main character that all of this is going to be driven around. Mm. 
I can see that. Yeah, you but it, I mean? it's like it's called Judas and the black, and the black side. Yeah, yeah. Black yeah. And he's clearly the Judas. Yeah, <laughs> no, for and sure. you see in the and you see in the in the preview in the trailer how like he looked like he's like conflicted. You see the the fat white dude playing the FBI agent. Who? Uh, what is that guy's name? Because Jesse Cl- he's in uh, a lot Jesse, of stuff too. Jesse Plem- Plem- Plemons. Dusty. Jesse. Jesse. Okay, he's in a lot of stuff too. Um, yeah. so Fargo's like, and Breaking Bad. Yeah. Couple movies. Um. Anyway. But yeah, but he um, like I said, if I mean I don't want to go too much on the Fred Ham- Hampton story if, if mm-hmm. everybody knows everybody, that's cool everybody knows yeah i mean even though the trailer i have some research to do yeah so. the trailer mentioned some things about you know william o'neill played by lakeith uh stanfield about mm-hmm. his, his little background and you know so yeah i don't yeah so if you know the story you know the yeah story. well that's what i'm saying that's why i'm saying it seems like the title the with the title and just yeah. the trailer the way it's shot yeah. Um, I think it'll be the, his story being told through uh, the Black Panther movement. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so that'll be interesting. That'll yeah. be interesting because because uh, clearly both of them them brothers are great actors. Yeah. And uh, but I think I think he'll he'll have as good a performance with that role, like he'll have to have as good of a performance with that role as Daniel Kalula will have as Fred Hampton. Yeah. Also, Fred Hampton was 21, I think. Yeah, he was. He was 21 when he, when he died. Yeah. Um, wow, you can find him by Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the next thing I was thinking. I was like, hmm. Okay. But I guess, like, I don't I can't, I guess they were thinking like they can't think of nobody like I mean I know there are some young ones that's like not as big as Daniel Kaluuya that can like be a, a box office you know when people go there yeah, I go see I think uh, oh, yeah, homie yeah. from Snowfall might have been able to do it. Mm. You know who I wanted I wanted uh, uh, Stephen James from um, if Bill Street could talk. Um, he was in 21 Bridges. He was um, Jesse Owens, um, Race. He would have been good. Man, yeah. Because um, I was thinking, like, the look that he had on If Bill Street Could Talk, yeah, that was, like, kind of like, you know, like the friend of Hampton. He had the, you know, the fro, the, si- the thick sideburns and all that. And it was like, yeah. So it was, like, definitely um, all he had to do was probably, like, you know, gain a couple pounds, like, because, you know, Fred Hampton was, like, a little heavier. Pudgy type when he was yeah, but um, I, yeah, cause like I said, Dan Kula, he's you know get out Black Panther, you know he's already you know merged into a, a leading man, you know leading star or whatever. So it's like you know, as for I mean yeah, he is thirty, so it's like uh, thirty one. I'm sorry, so I don't. I thought he was older than that. Wow. Hmm. We recall, yeah. Hmm. So he um definitely, I guess they were looking at that. Like, yeah, he's already a, a a big name. So yeah, let's just see if he could do it. Yeah, he's thirty one years old. So, but I heard it's another Fran Hampton film uh coming out. I forgot who's supposed to play him. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm, Hey, it's not. It's just this one, right? It's it's probably been um, I think a documentary. I never. I could be wrong, but um, yeah. So hopefully it'd be good, and hopefully um, we can see it in theaters. So which y'all like? I don't know. Like uh, yeah, like you said before, how do you feel about the black British actors, you know, taking over? Because like someone said, someone. We already had you no. Know, we had no African American playing. That well, that's well, that's not well. It's not true what he said. Uh, we had no African American that played a Dr. King and Harriet Tubman in a Fred Hampton. <laughs> we had we did had an African American play. Uh, we a, had Homeboy from Westworld and Shaft. Yeah, Jeffrey Wright. The same, yeah, he played in Paul the, one Paul one field back in the day. Uh, field, yeah. uh, who else? Um, 
uh, what's the name? Uh, Lavar Burton was Dr. King on Ali. <laughs> he didn't speak, but he had he was in there. <laughs> and then you said Malcolm. You said earlier Denzel. Yeah. Mario Van Peebles played him. Yeah. yeah. In Ali. Yeah, so no, it was, no, there was someone, someone tweeted this. I ain't said it. It was like someone was like, just, no, 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 I get what you're saying. No, yeah. no, but again, that person needs to shut the hell up. I can't do your research for you. Whatever. But it's crazy how, like, you got the black Brits, they, you know, the actors, they, you know, it's funny how, like, inter it's really interesting how they can, like, easily, you know, with the axe, switch the accent to play a, foreign, a foreigner you know, American, but you know, when we, uh, American actors, black, especially black actors, we haven't had that many, it's not that many good ones that actually did a good job playing a foreigner. Like we had Denzel, um, what was that movie? Like, it's just like one of Denzel early films, Queen of the Country or something like that. And he played a, a, Brit, a British guy and it was, his accent was bad. Um, mm. I can think of some, it's so many like people that like, you know, American actors that was, you know, uh, Jamaican or African and like, they didn't pick it up real good. I mean, I know like people like Forrest Whitaker, Don Cheadle, they did a good job. Um, you think Forrest Whitaker did good in Black Panther? You think his accent was believable? Cool. Forrest Whitaker. On Black Panther? Um, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and I wonder how, how Africans feel when they see, yeah, Americans. I mean, I know they don't have to, you know, with Chadwick, he definitely got the accent and, you know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to think someone else that had a really, like, oh, Don, when Don Cheeto, actually both, when he was the British in the Ocean Eleven films, even though people saying how bad it was, but people loved his performance. Oh, no, that was great to me. Yeah. Yeah, to me it was good. Yeah. yeah and, and he also, did it in more than one... Yeah. Film too, you know what I mean? Like, and you know what I'm saying? And you got Hotel of Wanda when he was, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know. But it's like a a, a few, a, a good bunch of them that like did a bad job as far as, you know, the accents of a Jamaican or an African. And like, they just, I'm trying to think like uh, Method Man, he was in this movie called The Wackness and he played a Jamaican. <laughs> um, the what? The Wackness. It was just like independent film. Um, he played he played this Jamaican drug dealer, and it was like the accent was like nah. And then also too Gabriel Sadiq, who um, Power Power Heist. Yeah, Tower Heist. Tower Heist. Yeah, Tower Heist. Yeah. That was um. I'm yeah, she 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 did. She had a. Yeah. yeah. It was alright though. Yeah, it was alright. So you had like those group. Like certain people, and like people, like you know, Forrest Whitaker, he did a good job on um, Last King of Scotland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, shoot, even people was getting on um, Denzel on the Mighty Coin in his uh, Jamaican accent. The Mighty Coin with um, him and Robert Townsend. It was a, uh, yeah, it was like a kind of like a, a a thriller, comedy, whatever. But yeah, it's, they came out like back in the late eighties. But yeah. But anyway. So um Tommy, okay. I'm gonna get what? No, I'm sorry. I was thinking of someone who had a um a, a black American actor that had a good foreign um accent. I mean, you got a good bunch, like Angela Bassett. She, um, not just Black Panther. She also, she, uh, I'm trying to think. Lawrence Fishburne and Higher Learning. Mr. Williams. <laughs> a peppermint? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what, what accent he was doing? Oh, yeah, it was Jamaican. I, I was like, it was. <laughs> it was something Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, hey, Tom, I'm gonna let you take this one. This is uh, since you, you know, oh, what's up? Oh, I don't think anybody answered your question. Oh, uh, I, thought, <laughs> I, I thought they, I thought somebody did. You asked I this, couldn't, no. uh, I was, yeah. So, what's your answer, Sean? No, 
You were talking about about American actors who play. How we feel about yeah, like uh, black British oh, actors oh, 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 oh. playing black American characters. Yeah. yeah. Historical figures, right? Historical figures are just. I don't think it's a story. I think it's just characters. It's characters, characters period. That, that they gotta play. They gotta have a foreign accent. You know what I'm saying? They, okay. Either African, Jamaican, British. What you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because it's like you know you got like people like John Boyega, you just Alba, yes, um, Chuatau yeah. F4. So it's like um, do I get it? Do I get it? Because I'm really uh, oh, what, what, is, what, what is what what is what is it? I gotta look at it myself, but I know you're talking about Chuido. If I saw it in front of me, I could break it down. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but you're a good actor. <laughs> I'm just saying, but it's just, I don't want to say Chewy. My man Chewy. <laughs> Chewbacca? What? He, okay. he probably has a nickname. <laughs> yeah, and it's amazing how he quickly he um switched up to like. They probably take classes. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they, like I was going to say, like the British actors, they got better, like, training for that, to, um, for the accents. And uh, that's what they, I heard Versus from us. Yeah, that's what I heard. So, like, you know, between him, Cynthia, um, who played uh, Harriet. Um, I forgot she's British. Yeah, she British. Yeah. Uh, Yo, you're going to be surprised. It's so many people, like, um, you watch the show All American. No, I've heard of it. I never watched yeah. it. Football, Netflix, high school football. Yeah, the, the main actor, he's British. Oh shit! It's a lot. Of, it's it's. Uh, we can go on. It'd be some people you surprised, like what? He's British when you hear him on interviews, and you, Crazy. and then it's like you look at you. Then you look at the shows and like or the movies and like, damn, you couldn't. Hey, did you know that Delroy Lindo is British? He's born British. Get the fuck out of here! I'm this serious. I'm this serious. He, even he still got the accent when, if you hear him on interviews. I'm dead serious. No freaking way. D- Delroy Lindo is. Delroy Lindo is British? Yes. Wow. Yep. yep. All this time, yes. I, thought, I thought he was like, I thought he was from Chicago or something. Somewhere. Yeah, right. You know what, <laughs> what are the Midwest cats? You know, right you know, outside of Chicago. Somewhere. Yeah. Minnesota or something. I don't know. <laughs> Minnesota though, really? I know. I'm just For real? Like No, I'm just saying, um, I say Midwest. <laughs> Sorry. Word. Um to, to to answer your question, I honestly don't have an issue with it. As long as you long as you do what you're supposed to be doing as far as you know your uh you do your research as an actor. You know, you 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 do what you can to give it a hundred percent to really put on a good, you know. Because at the end of the day, you know, acting is a you know for them it's like a a, a job for them. Your your you know the the fact that you are switching up your voice, maybe how you walk, your mannerisms, and things of that nature. That that shows your dedication towards the craft and for the role. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so the fact that you that you do that is 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 and, and you're believable with it. That's dope for me. I don't care, you know, where you come from. Just as long as you you have a um, a, like a. a you know your history or your background of whoever you're playing. That is if they're um, um, like an historical figure, like you said. Mm-hmm. But but even if they're just like you know a fictional character and they have some sort of um, uh, disease or disorder or whatever. You know what I mean? Like as long as you kind of do your research of what someone with those disease or disorders might do, but the symptoms are and how they show that they have this particular thing, it's going to come off believable. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I um, okay. So, um, 
So, yeah, I, I, I honestly have no issue with it. I know Samuel Jackson had an issue with it. I think he was on, I think, April in the morning or something like that. It was one of those Hot 97 shows, and he did talk about how he had an issue with uh, black British actors playing black American actors. You know, I think it's kind of, I think he's saying, like, I might take them out of a job or something like that. And they don't know, you know, they haven't been through what, uh, those characters have been, those people have been through, you know, dealing with like racism and things of that mm-hmm. nature. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so, so what you think about that, Tony? I don't know. I think it's it's weird uh, to to feel like you have to hire actors from different countries or not even feel like but for you to feel like you can't find talent from this country um on the flip side it's like damn i remember when i found out when idris was was british i was like yeah that that. messed me up too (laughs) um when he was british when homeboy from um get out daniel kalula Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, they're doing their thing with these roles, yeah. And it's like some people, and it's not like there's no racism overseas, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But that's the thing, right. that- and that's what they were saying. Yeah. Uh, and it's something that I was watching, uh, the journal Netflix, where they, yeah, when, yeah, um, when, uh, the doctor, yeah, I know what you're talking about, I forgot the name of the, yeah, when they see us, um, no, 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 I'm sorry, no, no. uh, crap, um. The documentary, what's it called? It's like a. It's a docu series. Thirteen. Oh no, 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 no. Crap! Now you got me looking. Um, yeah, it's like a. It's kind of like the title is like kind of like a Spike Lee joint. Uh, it's. Yeah. Uh, crappy. But 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 anyway, John Boyega was in it. Yeah, and they talked about it. And then, right, I think him and what's the other dude, David O. Something. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, him, yeah, him too. Um, he he spoke on it too. What what Samuel Jackson said, and yeah. they both felt like you know, uh, they they've had those uh, issues. They gotta have us. Experience. They gotta have us. Yeah, I know it was something like that. Like I said when he said, right? Yeah, and you funny. know what's funny? I made that same mistake. Remember a while back? Um. It was me, you, and Jay. Shout out to Jay. It was after we after we went to the Little Brother show, mm. and we was at Applebee's, and I was talking about it. Mm. And I was like, "Yo, I still haven't seen when they see us or something like that." And he looked at me crazy, and I meant to say they gotta have us. Yeah, it was. You corrected yeah. me. Yeah. About that. Yeah. So I thought yeah. it was funny that you go. Is that is that on Netflix? Or yeah, it's still on Netflix. Yes. Yeah, I think they it's enough. Both of them. We they, when they see us and they gotta have us. They yeah, gonna, yeah. Yep. Watch them back to back. Yeah, for real. <laughs> you get different meanings, but still, it's like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> but still, um, no, uh, but like, it's amazing how like, you, you know, people criticize, especially us black folks, about you know, they say, well, why couldn't they give this role to such and such? You know. I understand, like, yeah, I mean, it's hard for a black actor, period, to get these roles. It's, it's still a struggle, surprisingly. I don't know why. I mean, that's why... It's a little bit better, I feel. I mean, could draw. Yeah. It's a little bit better, but it could be more. Because I do see a lot of new faces. Yeah. But, but I want to see more. Yeah, but they still give the same, like, typecast roles to the people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, like the past, like the romantic comedies, the black romantic comedies, Sanaa Lathan was in, she was like an everyone or Morris Chestnut or Gabriel Union or Tay Diggs, you know what I'm saying? They was like always, like you saw, they, they could have given it to someone else, you know. Yeah, but that played 20 years ago, though. I know, I'm, I'm just, I'm using them as an example. But I also like, but also too, like if you had, um, I'm trying to think of now, like, you know, and that was for Keith Stanfield. Yeah, but no, people people are already people are already saying like, damn, why Chadwick gotta play all the historical figures? We tired of that now. I'm like, damn. So it's like I, I was kind of saying that. It's like they trying to make him the new Leon. Yeah. Because you know, Leon was everybody from back in the day. So 
I don't know. And then also too, people like criticize they criticize about Eddie like from even uh Idris Alba or John Boyega about, you know, especially, you know, well, it's not their fault really, because it's like well, Idris Alba, he was just like after the Y, he was just taking any role until he got his made a name for his now himself. So it's like, yo. Um so it's like John Boyega, he just, you know, with uh, he got lucky because he, uh, he he was uh, picked to play for Star Wars, and uh, to this day, I'll say they did him dirty. <laughs> In a way, he did, yeah. Yeah, because everybody thought that, you know, Finn was going to be a Jedi and all that, but nope. Right, but they focused it right on the girl. Yeah, so it was like that. And also, too, um, I don't know. It's just, um, to me, it's like, like I feel what all, both of y'all said. It was like, yeah, as long as you're black, you know what I'm saying? And and like you know, there's some people on Twitter saying, "Well, they don't know our struggle and all that," and uh, you know, but well, there's racism in you know British and all that stuff, and you know, they have stories. Idris Alba and John Boyega talking about how like you know, the discrimination they have down there, and also too, it's hard to like get roles that Brit from those British shows and movies. That's why they had to come here and all that, and. So, yeah, it's, it's it's a lot, but I mean, it is what it is. As long as you're black, and also too racism all over the world. And also too, when an opportunity comes your way, take that shit. It's like, yo, I mean, hey, I mean, they have like star appeal and they have star power, and that's for who the the credit uh, the studio f- or producers feel. You know, I think he could play them and. I mean, they have the decision to say yes or no. And then they got, then there's some people that's criticized and saying, oh, well, uh, Cynthia, uh, she took that hurt role because she's dying to get that Oscar nomination. She, she did get the Oscar nomination and, you know, and there was like a little controversy in the, on what, the comments that she said. I forgot the comments that she said about them. Um, no, there was a comment, or it was something that a, a, a old tweet that she, you know, saying that she was like anti African American. It was like a joke that she made. Um, yeah. So, like, um, people kind of took, and then also, too, when they was interviewing, like, she was had like a couple of interviews. Like, um, people didn't want to address that topic, I guess. I don't know, but it's crazy. But um, I don't know. But it's yeah, this what is what I mean. As long as you black, if you got the talent, go ahead. I agree. So I mean, and, and I ain't gonna lie, I'm not too picky on like when people on that accent. I mean, like I said, I thought Dane Kalula, he definitely, you can definitely hear like, especially when he said like the classic Fred Hampton lines, "You can kill a revolution, but you can kill a revolutionary, but can't kill a, a revolution." I mean, he can. He definitely had some of the uh, the speech patterns of how Fred Hampton said it. You can hear that, uh, and then um, you know what I'm saying. So like, and now Idris Alba, he's like, you know, he was like at first he was speaking an American voice. Now like people just don't care. They love to hear the <laughs> British. You know, they try to make his character British. They don't care no more. Like first it was like you know, it was like every time he played a role, you couldn't decide if. Or is he gonna put, have the American voice, or is he gonna do the British native tongue? But now people don't care no more since you know he's a big star now. He can do whatever. So, um, yeah. But um, hey Tommy, I'm gonna go ahead and um give you this next topic. Uh, this is uh, since you know you saw the video. <laughs> well, everybody saw it. Well, you, everybody, I saw the video too. It, yeah, I was going to say, oh, you did, did you not but... see the video? Because if you did not see the video, we can pause <laughs> and give you an opportunity to <laughs> review the video. <laughs> I saw the video. All right, all right. So, as you may or may not know, Queen Cardi and Queen Meg got together to use their lyrical talents to create a song called WAP. Is this Missy telling us this? Okay, there you go. (laughs) For all I was about to say, like, when is he going to show up? (laughs) 
It's a little, I don't know, it's getting a little hot to me. So I was just cooling back, you know what I'm saying? Because I had this light up, try to, you know, avoid the dark, or, you know, lighten it up a little bit, but yeah, it's kind of hot. But anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. Yeah. To create a song called WAP, spelled W A P. And what does that mean? Well, <laughs> Brion, <laughs> it means different things to different people. Oh, Nick. Oh. If you would just say the damn thing. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, it's like OPP? It's like an OPP thing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some. Well, that some, last P is in there. That last <laughs> P is in there, yes. But, but yeah, and in that, and with respect to the P, it means different things to different people. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the video is uh, the song and the video is sexually suggestive, explicit, and. As for the video, they did a great job. As for the radio edit, they did a great job. Standing ovation. Yes, yes. Home run knocked it out the park for the strip club anthem of the year. Yes. It's a shame that we are all stuck indoors because strip clubs now through the remainder of 2020 and possibly in perpetuity Will go up. With those words. I know, when right? WAP comes on when your favorite dancer is coming to the stage. Actually, I heard they were gonna do a, a drive, a drive in or drive by a strip, <laughs> strip. T- Wait, a drive by strip club? What is it gonna be twerking on a <laughs> ring? Like what the hell? Who is gonna be doing yeah. this? This is not new. This is not new. <laughs> Booty clapping. <laughs> 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 Yeah, they say it's supposed to be a drive-in type of. You can do it outside. Come, yeah, just drive by and get you, you see some booty clapping. That's crazy. Yeah, drive by too. <laughs> I have it. Pick up the clubs. <laughs> I get clapped up. <laughs> so I have a confession. I've never been to a strip club ever in my adult life. Ever? I'm 37 years old. And I've never been. Wow. It's so real. I have. <laughs> but I wasn't okay. there long. I wasn't there long. It was like for like a a, a <laughs> like yeah, a it was no, like, like four minutes. <laughs> no, I wasn't twenty one. And I will, it was a long story. Me, uh, my and twenties, twenties and eighteen. No, I was no. I'm sorry, I was twenty one. Twenty wasn't, but it's a long story though. Oh, so twenty fucked it up. No, 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 no. I, we kind, we both kind of effed it up. But it was like the guy that um took us. He was older. It's a long story, but yeah, but uh, we wasn't there long. We'll talk off air. Yeah. But I, yeah, I was, I was there. I was in, inside and smoke, cigarette smoke, and I saw a skinny uh, girl that, you know, she had a fat ass, but skinny as hell. <laughs> I'm about to do her Shots. numbers. I know. No, I mean, no, she, no, she just, no, natural. It wasn't no. Oh, okay. Yeah, was, First of all, this is, this is all this is very sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at both of you niggas. <laughs> I'm, dis- I'm disappointed in I'm disappointed in both of you, of both of you gentlemen. Highly, highly disappointed in both of you. <laughs> Secondly, we're gonna have to re- re- rectify this. Uh, I don't know when. Can we stop TBD. I don't know why or where. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Your ass is going. <laughs> hey, look, I got a request. Can we can we go to Atlanta? That's what I'm saying. I don't know about you know. Oh yes, we can go to Atlanta. Hey, let me tell you something. Wherever we was 
we was about to leave for uh, A3C, and we was parked right across the street from the yes. uh, from Magic City. And I was like, okay, that's that the was the closest I've ever been to Magic been. City. And I've never been. <laughs> Too bad it was a Sunday, and we had to go back. <laughs> yes, and and, and 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 here's the crazy part. For those of you that are from Baltimore and y'all watching this, I used to work for houses, for the Housing Authority of Baltimore City, which they had a side, one side of it, of the building is on Fair Street. The other side is on Baltimore Street. Like the block is the legit block. right across, it's right on the block. Right on the block. And I've never been to any of those spots. You didn't go. I'm gonna walk right past them and go right to the subway. Yeah, for real. That's, you didn't that's in between them joints. You didn't, he didn't go for lunch break. He didn't go when he was after a stressful day. I need to go <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, grab them a foot. I went to the subway for the cookies, but I didn't go to the strip club to see some cookies. Uh, <laughs> damn. So, he didn't want to relieve, relieve from stress after a long day of work. He went straight to the bus. <laughs> Literally. I really did. I really did. <laughs> he didn't he didn't want to go to the bus of asses over. <laughs> Let me stop. Sorry. My fault. That was funny. I know. Sorry. Yes, it was, but also <laughs> just the, the fact that it, it, the, yes. So to answer the question, yes. We can go to Atlanta. Yes. Start saving your money now. Yes. But to say next year we gotta, you know. Uh, uh, what you call a milestone birthday? One of us got a milestone birthday next year, so there you go. Or you know, if we can't uh, get to Atlanta, <laughs> we can bring the strip club to you because, yeah, you know, I have thrown a bachelor party or two in my day. I've heard. Uh, they go off really well. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about that over an open microphone or camera. <laughs> but yeah, we could we could just play in that. We could just, you know, milestone birthday. Yeah, we can get it. We, we can figure some things out. I can't wait for the comments on, um, <laughs> I don't know who and, on Facebook or, or like, I can't wait for yeah, Sean, well, we're not like, that big yet, so I know for real. We're gonna get one comment. <laughs> yeah, for real. Probably some, somebody gonna mention probably like like years later. Y'all niggas didn't been a strip club. I heard it. <laughs> yeah, I saw them. <laughs> for real. <laughs> we're gonna get them like women in your own ago. family oh, might man. say that. <laughs> Y'all been to a strip club? That was ten years. I know. I know the episode was like five years ago, but still. Hope y'all went. Hope y'all saw something. <laughs> hope y'all been to somewhere. Like I'm like, man, for real, chill. Get on my B.I. Talk about Atlanta strip clubs. You can't have that response when we brought Jeezy, though. <laughs> you got to play two chains. You got to play the birthday joint. Yeah. Two chains got a joint on this. Two chains got a joint on this. Two chains. I'm saying play two chains on. Tell your baby daddy that he's super weak. Man, I'll <laughs> All right, well, I guess we can be done. Oh, and, oh, and, done. Oh, and done. you got to get the wings. Oh, like, the, of course. Luke, Luke, Luke Jack Williams. Arlo approved. I know, for real. Luke Williams approved. I know, for real. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you don't need the bubble for the wings, then they got to be on point. Exactly. exactly. You, that, you that hungry? <laughs> I know y'all ain't satisfied with the food in the hotel, but damn. I know you're hey. hungry. Yes, yes, we are. And, and slightly <laughs> thirsty <just> too. <laughs> what you say? I said yes, yes, we are hungry and slightly thirsty too. Wow! <laughs> wow! 
Hey, who? The strip club. Yeah. The strip club is like is like the legit thirst trap. It is. That's Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta explained it so well <laughs> on the episode. And, and, and now the newest thirst trap is uh, OnlyFans, you know? Oh, no, OnlyFans, yes. <laughs> like, what? Five dollars? Ten? And then some of them, they got some of them, like one of the models, they got it for free. And I'm skeptical, like, I don't know. <laughs> like, what would we see? Go ahead, B, click that subscribe button. <laughs> Smash that like button. I know, right? <laughs> Sign up. No, I think we're not going to get everything for on a free joint. Like It's like, oh, no, you still got to pay for this. <laughs> like, well, you might get a side move. Yeah, for real. <laughs> a booty clap. <laughs> one one booty clap. You yeah. get two claps. Right, right, the one right cheek just, bam, that's it, nigga, bye. I know, for real. <laughs> <laughs> get that exclusive five... Fifty-five dollars, like what? For real. Mm mm mm. Fifty-five dollars. Well, on that note, um, yeah, yeah. I guess we can end it like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and now ends our strip club portion of the pod. I mean, real rap though. That WAP video is amazing. Um. I know, well, well, we didn't talk about the controversial thing of Kylie Jenner. Oh, no. Is her she, her she, being in it, and, and, and a lot of the fans, uh, I think a lot of people on Twitter want her. It's an online petition. Uh, out of it, it's an online petition. Wow. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> really? It's like what, a bunch of, what, what is that about? Well, you know, yeah. they. What's the motivation? It is kind of random. I will say that it was like. Yeah. It's not even like she's naked cool. or nothing like that. No, they're just no. saying because, you know, she's not, you know. You know how to get on all the Kardashians anyway. They they're not they're not black. They're not you know they want they want they want to be like us. So So you gotta be black to have a wop. And you know, and her body ain't real. You know, is Cardi's is Meg's is all of that real? Well, Meg's Meg's real. Meg's real. Yeah. I saw her. Meg's body and the bars look very real to me. Facts. Facts. So facts. In my expert opinion. Yeah. <laughs> and Cardi she got the body and the bars. And I forgot what Card- uh, Cardi got. What what done? Cardi got boobs. Yeah, I want to say boobs done. I know the Cardi got a boobs done. And the ass is real. Other people write her rhymes. Yeah, so she's yeah. happy. I, I'm not even gonna front like we. Cardi could be like the Diddy. From a from a female standpoint, as far the female as like, Diddy. the female Diddy, like and 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 this is not a slight at all to Diddy. It's not a slight at all, and I don't think it's big enough Cardi too much. Uh, we know Cardi is not a rapper. You know what I'm saying? She tells us as as much, and we know Diddy wasn't a rapper. He had. Ghost, you know, ghost rhymes written by several people, mm-hmm. and you could tell who the people was when you heard the rhymes. Who had ghost wrote his own? But that motherfucker would be hot though. Like you, like even as somebody who Does really he knew how to play the game. was that he knew how to play the game. Yeah, I mean, he knew how to play the game. He knew how to perform it. Yeah, I mean, he was a good, good yeah. entertainer, a great entertainer. A, you know yeah, what I mean? He learned, Cardi, from, he learned from Andre Harrell, rest in peace. Yeah. And Cardi is learning from whoever she's learning from. Offset. And she is performing the shit out of these, these songs that don't got no kind of bars. Hmm. And it's working. Hmm. It's working real well. For the casual rap fans, yes. For the ones that's just there to just have a good time and party, yeah. But you, you know, know it, you don't, you don't always want to hear bars all the time. Like this is the I'm not song that. for the for that good time party. You know what I mean? Look, I'm not, I'm, and I'm not saying that. I, I, and I do agree. With Your that. girl is going to turn up to this. Yep. Turn up to what? Wow. Oh, to wow. I don't know if my girl will. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Let Holly, her get Holly around Barry. some of her girlfriends on Roots Pick. My girl don't have a lot with, of girlfriends. With a couple she drinks. About two, three. That's all you need. <laughs> but trick. But but my girl don't drink like that. And when she do drink, she's sleepy. So what you're saying? Right. I'm sorry, Tracy. No, no, I'm no, sorry. No, I'm no. sorry. Saint Tracy would never. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my bad. I'm not even mad at that slight. I'm yeah, sure. <laughs> sorry, Trey. I ain't gonna. Uh, Saint I'm Trey not, would not, never. <laughs> I'm not even mad at that slight. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm but just saying, say man, this. it's one of the. Ten, ten. This is one of those records. I think that you're gonna hear it. And oh, it's gonna records. go. It's gonna uh, go for sure. What's the what the, the background it's... sample too? Oh yeah, yeah. For real. You know what I mean? It's gonna go. But what, but what I'm trying to say is, I agree in the sense of there are times where I don't want to hear bars, but for the majority of the time, when it comes to hip hop, I listen to bars. I love listening to bars. I love listening to concepts. I love listening to substance. I love hearing stories. But the times where, but there are times where I take a break from listening to, you know, the the wordsmiths and and the and the and the lyrical mutants. Mm-hmm. And I'll play Lil Baby. I'll play Dub Baby. I'll play uh 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 Ray uh, Shrumman. I'll play Pitbull. You know when a when a, when a great time for that is. At the strip club. He's ready. <laughs> He's ready to go. B, you, you got to get ready, man. Get up. Get up. You're laying down. Get up. We still get up, son. We still quarantined. I can get a foot. <laughs> still quarantined. Man, okay. So, um, but no. Nah, um. <laughs> Uh yeah, I mean Halle Berry, she tweeted um earlier today that you know she's gonna bump 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 it when her kids her kids not around. <laughs> so yeah, she yeah. will. Halle Berry, no, no, it's a it's a fun track. I'll say that. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. gonna bump it. Uh, like I said, the video already is is gonna make what. Probably it's already it's gonna make the thirty. It's, it's at twenty million already. Yeah. Beyonce is gonna bump today. it. And also, Adele's Megan's gonna bump it. Yeah, for yeah, for, don't be surprised. Yeah, Adele. She um, early this week she tweeted that she watched the Beyonce joint. Now she's probably gonna say, "Yeah, I listen to um, Cardi and Meg." But um, right. Michelle Obama's gonna bump it. <laughs> and if Michelle did that, she then. might. Her and Barack she gonna turn up. Will. Oh, she got a podcast now. She does. Yes. It, it just came out last week. Yeah. Last week, yeah. Yeah. So Spotify? Yeah, Spotify. Mm-hmm. Um, Barack mm-hmm. was Barack was the first guest. Right. Ah, oh, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get there eventually. Yeah. We'll get that. We'll get that uh Joe Rogan money, God willing. <laughs> Must keep swimming. Must keep swimming. <laughs> exactly. Wait. Exactly. Speaking of that. What you think is going to be uh, going on with Ellen? How you feel about that? Yeah, so so did Ellen just say like, "Yo, fuck this, I'm out." <laughs> I don't know. It's rumors saying that yeah, they trying to get her to uh, quit, and then this Twitter like they got, they already seen rep- like who they want to be replacing her and all that. So I've heard like, Jer- James Corbin is like the the main one. Yeah, that I heard that too, and they uh, I don't know. It's crazy. I'm. I ain't gonna lie. I did like think like you know that your whole be kind to one another and the gifts thing and all that. It was like ah, uh, that's I was like it's it's so nice, but it's like part of me feel like I don't know. It's like some type of something shady's going happen. Something <laughs> shady's about to happen. Shady's going behind behind closed doors, Ellen is a yeah. bitch. And here we go. I, I've heard stories. There's a bunch of stories floating around saying yeah. that she isn't. Yeah, and I heard that she's not really kind and all that and. I was like, wow. And I said too, I'm, you know, me and my mom, we watched that show faithfully. 
Yeah, it's just like, yeah. yeah, so it's like, um, they, yeah, it's just like, yeah, it's just, and also too, I thought she was also too pondering too, as far as with, you know, also too of like black artists and culture type in a way, and I, at first, and I first thought, you know, uh, she was, you know, because she did like make some jokes that was kind of like, uh, that was, you know, like the using boat one. You saying boat? She had like a mean. She did. She did like it was like a Photoshop picture. It was this was one of the last like the last race that he did, the one that you know the one he uh, looked back when he ran. Uh, he won. Mm -hmm. So it was like a picture she had. She uh, they added her in the picture and she like on his back, and you know, right like riding his back. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> That's not a good look. Yeah, that was one. And then there was another one where it was like um, she did a joke about uh, it was some rapper. I forgot what happened, but it was like, yeah, I forgot which one it was. But yeah, it was just um, I don't know. You know, we got the sexual harassment. We got from sexual harassment to racist. And then I remember uh, she had a, a, a another black DJ before Twitch came, and he was um, an African. Josh, she's awesome. Yeah, he yeah. So um, I don't know, man. It's crazy. I don't know. I don't know. It's just so much. Yeah, like between what you know, how behind the scenes and stuff that he really catching up dirt now. So it's just crazy. But I don't know. But yeah, but um, I don't know. Was anything else? Uh, oh, John Wick. Five. We ain't They're going to be f filming John Wick 4. It's John Wick 4 and a John Wick 5, and they're going to be filming them back to uh, back. at the same time. Back to back. To back. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and, and you know, they're supposed to have that series based on the hotel, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They put in there, so... You know, and you know, and then uh, they call it, I think they're supposed to film that right when he's done with the Matrix Four. That man gonna be tired, <laughs> but rich. Got he already, he's, he's, already, he's already rich, but he's still. already rich, right? I know he's already oh, rich, but, still. but he's gonna like, yo, all oh, this better be worth it. I ain't getting no younger either. For real, he's already in his fifties. Yeah, and I think his rumor he might be playing a Ghost Rider and yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was that rumor been out for the longest. So yeah, so it's like he's had one of the dopest comebacks in a while. Yeah, yes, I get out that. of a lot of uh, actors, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because because I remember. Hearing about the first John Wick, and it was like, uh, nah, I was like, damn, okay. oh, yeah, I couldn't wait to see it. And then, like, but then somebody told me, like, no, oh, you'll go see it. I tell you, so I said, all right. And then I saw it got good reviews, and I said, all right, let me give this a shot. And me and Trey saw it, and we loved it. But, um, Amazing. I don't know. Second one was cool. It was cool. But um the third one, I don't know. It was like the action like scene. The action scene was dope, but it was like when it when he got to see the uh the the main the big boss of He school. had to do all that. Yeah, yeah that, that it was like much. and also too uh just the way it ended, like it was like you saw how he got shot. And like, up. bro, he he hit two fire escape rails and still survived. I'm like, bro, how's that possible? Like, he said something to him. He gave him a finger. Yeah, I'm like, wow, you at least you had that much strength. Be honest with you, <laughs> I don't think they need a five. I'm I'm good with the four and like I know. I'm good with the four and you. Eight. Yeah, that's it. Like, what else can you do? How much are you gonna be mad because of the dog? <laughs> Who's up? I, I have an idea. Uh oh. Yeah. Why not be a uh oh? No, no, no. No, it wasn't that bad. Go ahead. Maybe you do a series or a movie where 
you're dealing, it's a prequel. You're dealing with a young John Wick. And you see him grow, you know, how he becomes John Wick. And you see him in his prime. I mean, I wouldn't and mind. you see him, how, we, how he meets his wife. Or how he became a sad. It's not the game. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. This, this, this is this is back when he was Johnny still. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I could see that. They could I mean, to be honest with you, I don't see it. Uh it'd be cool if they did a prequel. But as far as another continuation to this like whole thing, like damn, like I don't know. I, I swear I thought four was gonna be the last thing and then it said five. I was like, oh boy. They might as well just like make a prequel, call it a day. Yeah, I can't see. Yeah, I mean, what else can you do if you upset because they killed your dog? I thought you gonna say it. No, actually, I thought you were gonna say it. Yeah, I thought you were gonna be joking. Like, yo, with the uh, there's a couple of memes like him uh, joining the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember when, uh, especially when Endgame, like he would be in the portal, <laughs> or like, the, yeah, it's like a couple of memes they have, like especially when um. Thanos snap and then the dog and he <laughs> went on a rampage. But I don't know. Mm. But yeah. <laughs> so, um yeah. yeah. We're gonna end it up the gentleman. This is like over two hours. Yep. Three hours really. Oh wow. Yeah. He was talking, talking. Yeah, talking. I mean, you know, we stopped out for a minute and came back and still. <laughs> hey, man, you know. Faded out, faded in, and you know what I'm saying? We. Hey, I had fun. I enjoyed myself. You know, it's always a pleasure talking to you, gentlemen, about, you know, yeah. dope, nerdy stuff. <laughs> Fantastico. Yeah. You know, and, um, I just want the people to just to continue to, you know, spread the word about the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel and all that. Subscribe. Follow us um, on IG. Follow us on, on, on all the social medias. Listen, Facebook. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to the people that, that, that mm -hmm. been watching. You know what I'm saying? So, it's, yeah. Yep. All right, y'all. Anything else, Tommy, you got to say? You got to say, Tom, Tom. Sorry. I'm just, okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just wondering what's up with the voice. I don't know, uh, man. Um, uh, you know, 2021. We're making history. <laughs> Let's go. And and what way are we are we talk? Cause you, you like, already know which way. You I know, even I know, you. I know. What I'm saying, but it's like it's so entertain that question. You're going down a slippery slope, and he's on mute. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. On that note, peace out, y'all. <laughs> <y 'all. laughs> this is Holla.